Photo Jason. What now? Mo long shobam. How are you, Chi? Very well, Honorable Stain. How are you? No, I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. How's the family? Yeah, family also. Yeah. No, all, Send all fine. Thank you. Good. Very good. Send our Very love and greeting to them we... all, eh? Same on your side. Thank you. I'm a to enjoy. I'm a to My name is Ujjanin. I of the last catch, Utid. I God. And Eh, any apologies on your side? The apology got the M Squatch and not the M Utra Pache. Utian woman or minister. And that's yeah. going to be a meeting. We have meeting. We appointment a meeting. We have a meeting. We have a meeting. We have a meeting. We have in a party. She's attending interviews, mayoral interviews. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. No, Diabule. Mam Kagaza Opili la KK. Opili la Salon in Janini Nepos. Opila Nata Gabi Korn. Eh, 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 Mam cuts old Mam and in appointment, yeah, what the language means in and today. You send ten to the right shedding. A conmagi says I to quick joint meeting, but it's on Nigella go away on then see a Oh, oh, all right. Good, good, uh, good morning, uh, honourable members, and and the staff. I know that we are from a very hectic, stressful uh, period. But uh, what we used to say when we were teenagers, each job, each job. And uh, we we are here today. I'm happy that you have. Uh, I'm happy that you have availed, uh, uh, we have availed ourselves for this very important uh, 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 meeting and task. As we are all aware, we the resolution that was passed by the National Assembly uh, is just a, a, a recap, and we were then given a 
should I say a mandate that we must uh, we must uh, 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 pass or finish the work by November this year. But because of the challenges, many challenges in terms of uh, the pandemic, other responsibilities of our committees, we then couldn't then, uh, we, we are not able to meet that, that date. I think the purpose of this meeting, uh, Honorable Mandela, and, and all, all members is that we are to then request for an extension. I, 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 I hope um, everybody is of, of that understanding. And in that, if, if, if I'm in order, Honorable Mandela, is that we then request the Secretariat to just take us through that short report whose, whose main focus and content is that we are requesting an extension. I am not then going to prescribe how long the extension is to be, but I think all com both committees are aware of the mammoth task and other responsibilities in their, in their committees. Uh, for ex the duration of the extension will be determined by members. Uh, that, uh, I hope I've represented all committees well. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, the Honorable uh, Chairperson of uh, the Portfolio Committee on uh, Employment and Labor, the Honorable Mamu uh, for uh, the quick brief. Honorable members, also let me take this opportunity to greet you all and also uh, greet uh, the entire uh, staff uh, of the joint uh, committee uh, that uh, is uh, with us uh, in this uh, uh, joint uh, session. I would first and foremost, uh, honorable members, uh, like uh, to uh, read through the interim report of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development jointly with the Portfolio Committee on Employment and Labor, uh, which uh, is uh, dated on today's date being the 12th of November, 2021. Both uh, the Portfolio Committee on Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development and the Portfolio Committee on Employment and Labor, having been tasked by the House resolution in the National Assembly on the 10th of November, 2020, to conduct a comprehensive oversight work on the living and working condition of farm workers, farm dwellers, and uh, farmers, and to report to the House in the National Assembly on or before the 30th of November, 2021 hereby reports as follows. The committee submits honorable members that this interim report to uh, motivate its request for an extension as the honorable Tundra has alluded. And this is due to the delays which have been caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and its restrictions and other committee work constraints. We therefore, honorable members, seek to um, uh, ask for an extension until the 30th of November, 2022. This is what we are putting before you, honorable members. We will therefore uh, request to move for a mover in adopting uh, this uh, interim report. I open it up uh, to honorable members, if we may have a show of hands. Honorable uh, Marshall. Uh, good morning, honorable chair and everybody on the platform. 
I stand to move for the adoption of this record as a true reflection of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Marshal. Any second, Honorable Members, to request for an extension? Uh, Honorable um, Konto Kosti, how are you, Ma? I'm fine, Chair. Um, good morning to yourself, uh, my chairperson, Honorable Dunjo, and uh, Honorable Members. Chair, I raise my hand to second uh, the motion uh, that we, uh, we be given an extension to execute uh, the task at hand. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Honorable um, Kondo. Uh, honorable members, uh, I also see the hand of uh, the Honorable Chairperson, Mamutunjo. Mamutunjo? No, Chair, that uh, it was just a, I raised that by mistake. All right. No, thank you, uh, Mamutunjo. Honorable members, uh, let us thank you uh, for uh, adopting uh, the report, which will then be sent to the House uh, in request of the extension. And as uh, we've outlined that we would like an extension uh, until uh, November 2022. And uh, we will then uh, await for the approval uh, uh, of the House. Uh, we will therefore, honorable members, thank all the joint committee members that have been able to participate in this session and enable us uh, to be able to adopt uh, the interim report. Uh, I will uh, then uh, uh, hand back to Mamutunjo to close the session. And therefore, we may proceed, uh, honorable members, as the Committee of uh, Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development with our other uh, engagements of the day. Mamutu Unjwa, closing remarks? No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair uh, and, and honorable members. Uh, we will, I also want to thank members uh, for availing themselves. And we then have to really look into our programs and ensure that we, we do commit ourselves on this task that we're given by the house. With that, uh, I want to thank the meeting and uh, we, I think we will then be excused as employment and labor. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, the Honorable Mahmoud Tunjo from uh, the uh, chairperson of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Employment and Labor. Uh, let us wish you uh, well for the rest of the day's uh, proceedings on your end and wish you a good and restful weekend ahead. Take care and stay well. With that said, honorable members, let us uh, proceed uh, with the work uh, of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Ma'am Marshall, I see your hand is up. I'm sorry, Chair, it, it is the last hand, sorry. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, it is uh, with a certain heart today as South Africans, we bid farewell to the deputy president and our former president, the clerk, who are along with former president Tabo Mbegi served together as the first deputy president of the new democratic South Africa. The NSY apartheid leader and foe of our struggle for freedom served the nation with distinction during the presidency of Nelson Kholitasha Mande. He will be remembered for his role in leading the National Party to negotiations 
and setting South Africa Recording in on progress. the path to democracy. This was no easy task, but it was the foundation stones of nation building, national reconciliation, and social coercion. Many may not agree with me, but my view of him, I, which I have personally witnessed the great relationship of dignified respect which Madiba accorded him, and we will do no less. He must be acknowledged, honorable members, for his positive contribution. And if ever, Amelia Cabral's words were apt when he said, we tell no lies and claim no easy victories, close quote. Then it is necessary, it is certainly true for his journey and indeed our country's journey to democracy. He was a formidable foe, and when freedom dawned, he was instrumental in holding together the early strands of our democracy and weaving tight the delicate strands of our diversity and our aspirations to be a rainbow nation. After President Mandela's demise, he became a pillar of strength whom we could call on for support on more than one occasion. We honor his memory and say without fear of contradiction that our nation has lost a father and an elder statesman. I would fail in paying homage to our Deputy President F.W. de Klerk, if I did not remind the nation and our portfolio committee, and indeed the world, of my grandfather's tribute to him on the occasion of their joint acceptance of the Nobel Peace Prize Award, when he said, referring to Deputy President F.W. de Klerk, he had the courage to admit that a terrible wrong had been done to our country and people through the imposition of the system of apartheid. He had the foresight to understand and accept that all the people of South Africa must, through negotiations and as equal participants, in the process together determine what they want to make of their future. We have as a nation still a long way honorable members to go. And especially during these difficult times, we must draw on the examples and charter a way forward so that indeed we may realize the shared vision. In his memory and the memory of all the departed heroes, let us not abandon the path of nation building, national recollection, and social coercion. We owe it to our children and our children's children to ensure that our efforts will and must be ensured by the happiness and welfare of the children, at once the most vulnerable citizen in any society and the greatest of our treasures. The children must at last play in the open field, no longer tortured by the pangs of hunger or ravaged by disease or threatened with the scourge of ignorance, molestation, and abuse, and no longer required to engage in deeds whose gravity exceeds the demands of, the tender, of their tender years. Let us, honorable members, send our condolences as the Portfolio Committee of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development to President Clegg's family 
and uh, his loved ones. And we say, may his soul rest in peace. Let us take a moment to uh, take a moment of silence and bow our heads in his honor and those that have been lost during this pandemic of COVID. Thank you, honorable members. We will now proceed with the program of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. As we had started on Tuesday, honorable members, receiving the annual reports from the uh, Department of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development and its entities. We will be continuing today with a briefing from the remaining uh, entities of the department, that being the ARC, OBP, NEMEC, PPECB, and that will then bring us to the conclusion of the proceedings of the day. Let me, without uh, taking okay. further time, honorable members, yes, I see a hand. Thank you, Chair. Panyam? I'm still trying to log in because they were scheduled for 10 o'clock. That's okay. Thank you, Chair. Yes. We will therefore, honorable members, uh, ascertain uh, if uh, ARC is on the platform. OBP, are you on the platform? NEMEC. Are you good, on the platform? Uh, good, mo good morning, Chair and Gorsi. My apologies. Yes, OBP is on the platform, Chair, but I think we're scheduled for, for 10 o'clock. Thank you, Chair. It's OK. Uh, the committee is flexible. Are you on the platform with your team? Is your presentation ready? Maybe we can yeah. slot you first if you are ready. I will quickly ascertain, Chair, uh, because we're at different locations, then I will give you a feedback. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Please uh, check on our behalf and uh, alert us if uh, you are all on the platform. Anyone from NEMAC? I may also check PPECB, is it on the platform? My Mamkakaza, I see a hand. Is there anything you want to raise the secretariat of the committee? I think Umami Yamza Che Ulibe Logus Toba. Okay. If you may bear with us uh, slightly honorable members as we had anticipated uh, to uh, begin our work at uh, 10 o'clock as a committee. We had set the first session uh, for the Joint Portfolio Committee meeting, anticipating that it would have uh, taken about an hour. But uh, since you are efficient and effective in your work, we were able to uh, adopt and dispense uh, of the extension uh, sooner than we thought. So we will uh, alert uh, you uh, shortly. Uh, Mamustain. 
Honorable Stay. Yes. I received your communication uh, on the investigation uh, that is uh, requested uh, to be uh, looked into. We would like to engage in and around that and uh, plan accordingly. So okay. uh, when uh, you are uh, back uh, in town and the mother city, please uh, let me so we can uh, be able to have a discussion in around that and see uh, as to how to approach uh, the discussions. I will do. Thank you, Chair. I will let you know. I most probably will be there late next week or the week after at least. Okay, late next week will work for me. If you are around, do let me know. Okay, I will. Thank you. Um, Chair? Yes. Mr. Angweni from Namak is on the platform chair and he's the presenter. Thank you. Amun Angweni, good morning. Uh, good, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair. I, How are I you today? I'm fine, thank you, Chair. How are you? Very well, thanks. I understand is, uh, that we are, we are, our slot is only in the afternoon, but we were encouraged to join now, Chair. If you are on the platform, we would be happy to slot you in first, as uh, we uh, were able to dispense of our earlier engagements uh, uh, promptly. So if you are available as NAMEC, we can uh, proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I wanted to, to, to request that I just check with our acting chairperson who is supposed to lead us today. Uh, if she's okay. available, then I'll, I'll come back to you. Please do so, as we are also awaiting OPP to confirm if they are able to proceed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, honorable members. Uh, we are able to immediately proceed with OBP and I would therefore invite them on the platform as they are ready uh, to proceed on their side. Let us, uh, honorable members, uh, take them this opportunity to, wait, uh, to welcome the leadership of OBP and the officials uh, in uh, their uh, office. Uh, you may proceed and present your annual report. Good morning, Honorable Chair. Um, it's Renee Kinosi, the chairperson of the OBP board, um, and, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, Chair, I'm just going to do a short introduction, then I'll hand over to, to the, mem the management team. Um, I think firstly is just to inform the portfolio committee that uh, since our last meeting, um, and in fact just in this last week, we've seconded a board member, Mr. Lavoyo Mabombo, as the acting CEO at the OBP. Dr. Nchabele has taken ill. Um, he will, however, be present for this meeting this morning. Um, but um, I think it's, it's important that we state that up front. Um, and then just in terms of, of the, the highlights in the annual report for, for the OBP management, we'll deal with the details. I'll just give a, a quick summary of it. Um, despite all the challenges at the OBP in, in the last financial year, we were able to exceed our budgeted sales. Uh, in fact, we, we were able to generate income or turnover of 238 million versus 170 million budget. Um, our, that means that we exceeded our budget by about 40%. Um, our overall performance rate, however, was we had a, um, agreed to a 70% uh, performance rate with the shareholder. We were only able to achieve 50% of that. Uh, chair, by and large, that is, of course, 
um, attributable to, to the, the, the various challenges that the OBP has, its infrastructure being one of the, the main areas of concern. It has disrupted production in the last while um, and, and management continues to implement compensating controls in order for us to get our, our um, vaccines out. Um, uh, contributing to that is of course the, the infrastructure, like, infrastructure like our freeze dry and our vector proof facilities that we have not been able to, to procure purely because of, of the nature of that kind of procurement. We are ever in the final phases of the procurement of the, of the freeze dryer at, at this point in time. So the OBP achieved a, an unqualified audit opinion with uh, um, uh, emphasis of matter, which would have been uh, material emphasis mainly on, on the financial statements, would have been the, the inventory, and it was the way we accounted for our inventory, and the fact that we didn't write off some of our inventory that we should have written off, and the other matter was a, a deferred tax matter, that even though we had consultants assisting us, because it is a complicated matter, um, the, there was a, an issue on, on the deferred tax, uh, of course, we got an unqualified audit opinion purely because we had um, managed to, to put through the, the adjusting um, entries to ensure that the financial statements were still um, fairly presented, despite the challenges that the auditors picked up. And of course, it would be material misstatements because the auditors picked it up and we didn't. Um, from a non-compliance perspective, our, our um, supply chain management issues, um, I must just say that, that the issues that were detected, Chair, if you recall, we had appointed our CFO in November of last year, so transactions prior to that date um, had been identified as irregular expenditures, um, and, and those matters are being dealt with. Um, we have taken, um, we have investigated the matters and are taking implementing consequences uh, management in, in that regard. Um, I would, however, also just like to indicate that um, in terms of, of our uh, plans going forward, I've, I've alluded to some of the um, challenges already, but in terms of our plans going forward um, is to, to um, assure the portfolio committee that in terms of our, our top structure, um, the disciplinary matter against the CEO, our CEO is in its final stages, and we hope to finalize that in the coming weeks. Um, we do have an acting CEO. We have filled the other vacancies. Our chief operations officer started on the 1st of November. Our company secretary started on the 1st of October. Um, in terms of the um, product, uh, there have been product shortages and we are aware of it. Uh, we have, however, managed to get a uh, product like Blue Tongue, uh, Lumpy Skin Disease and the uh, Brucella uh, out uh, to distributors in, in the last few weeks. Uh, our challenges and, and what we currently need to do now is to ensure that we have uh, animal horse sickness uh, vaccines on the market in, in the weeks leading up to uh, just before closure in December. Uh, Chair, with that, if I may then hand over to my management team, if that's okay with you. Yes, that is okay, uh, Merkinosi. Uh, we can hand over. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mabombo? Honorable yeah. Chair, uh, thanks, Chair of the Board. Honorable Chair of the Committee, uh, thanks a lot for the, for the opportunity. Uh, we had uh, submitted our presentation for this morning some time ago, so I, I would like the, the the administration of the committee to perhaps slide it. I think it's, it's I'm not sure if that's, that's how we want us to do it. Uh, Chair. Thank you. Come again. Yeah, I was, I was indicating that we had submitted our, our presentation for, for, for the annual report to, to the secretariat of the committee. So I'm not sure whether you want us to flight it or we can just speak to each other. Yes, you have to flight it so we can uh, be able to follow. We are uh, live on social media and therefore the general public and citizenry of the Republic of South Africa would like to follow the proceedings of the committee. 
so yes, it is uh, shared on, on the platform, so you may proceed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair. Uh, as as the, the Chair of the, of the Board of OBB had indicated, uh, uh, substantively, I, I am a board member of OBB appointed by my cabinet and I've just joined the yesterday chair or maybe two days before. So I requested one of my long-standing executives to take us through the, the presentation with your permission chair, uh, Dr. Modumo, who might be uh, the, the committee is, 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 is perhaps might be a uh, familiar with. Uh, if you allow me chair, let me do that. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good, good morning, Chair, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jego Mudumo. I would also recognize the Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, Honorable Members, uh, DG, the Board of OBP, the Active CEO of OBP, and also the colleagues and other stakeholders. Uh, Chair, I don't want to, to waste time with the initial slide. I think the chair of the OBP board has, has, has clearly summarized it. So I'll just go into, 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 into the content. As you see in the slide that you see, just indicate the summary of my, my presentation. Next slide. Uh, basically, chair, yes. And this is the, 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 the services that we provide and also the product that we, we shared with you, Chair. I know that you are much familiar with the, with the product range and the service that we provide because we presented this earlier this year. Next slide. Next slide, please. This is the OBP strategies, Chair. Uh, as you are well aware that we, we also shared the strategy with the, with the uh, honorable members earlier this year. Basically, this um, uh, um, summarizes the, 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 the strategy that going forward and also informs our, our uh, organizational operational plans. Next slide, please. Uh, what you see in front of you is the workforce, work profile of OBP from top management right up until the uh, temp uh, temporary employees. The total employee is 270. And you can see if you do your calculation very well that uh, OBP is closer to almost 50-50 of female and, and male. I think there is also there's just a difference of plus or minus one or two percent. Next slide, please. On the governance side, uh, the these are the, the the board of directors of OBP, nothing has actually changed, uh, um, Ronald Chair. Uh, the, the governance on the left side is, is what actually informs the activities of the board of directors. Next slide. This is the organizational structure uh, that involves the, uh, the board, the CEO, and also the, uh, the, uh, the executives, which forms the department within the organization. Next slide. This is the executive team of OBP. Uh, as you are well aware that the, the chair has already alluded to, to the, the executive team and the recent appointments. Basically that summarizes the, the team and leadership of OBP. Next slide. On the organizational performance uh, chair, uh, this is the crust of the matter. Uh, the Strategic goal number one, this is the sus uh, financial sustainability of, of OBP. It talks more about profitability and OBP being in the top five in the market. Now, it talks of two outcomes. One is the income and the second one is profitability. On the income side is the sales revenue. The annual target was 170 million and the actual target to end of March uh, uh, financial year was 238, so there was an overachievement of 68 million. And on the on the profitability side, chair, you'll see that the annual target was 8% of our gross revenue, and we underperformed by minus 10%, and the variance was 8 million. I will try to, 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 to explain the link 
between the profitability when we, we, we get to the slide of, 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 of production. Next slide, please. Uh, strategic goal number two is product development. Uh, this is more to do with how we want to, to, to increase our market share through our innovative approach on research and development. Uh, you'll notice that we have uh, three outcomes, uh, new and improved product technologies, GMP facility, and vector pro. And then under the new and improved uh, technologies, uh, we have the uh, product that we submit, which are the dossiers to X36, which is under the TALRAT. Our actual annual target was three. Uh, annual actual year-to-date performance was two. We underperformed by, by minus two. I think the reason being uh, we don't have, we are battling in getting the approved a clinical facility that we can finalize some of our field research and development. Under the number of product improved, uh, our annual target was two. Um, a target was two. Uh, performance was three. We overachieved by one. A uh, number of new technologies introduced, our annual target was two. In, uh, annual performance, uh, actual performance three. We overachieved by, by one. Uh, under GMP, um, as you we are well aware that we, we have been sharing with the uh, honorable members in, in the past uh, two years and even more that OBP would like to, uh, to, to, to invest more into its facility and in equipment. And so that project because of the lockdown restrictions. Uh, because that deadline, that's all. Under Vector Pro facility, uh, we didn't actually approve because um, even though the, the tender went out publicly, um, the service providers who, who intended to uh, Next slide. Thank you. A strategic goal number three is that we want to be a high performance organization uh, driven by service excellence and internal collaborations. And the outcomes is satisfied customers, new partnership, uh, farmers trained, and registered distributors. And our satisfied customers share the annual target was eight. This is the percentage of customer co complaints resolved. And the actual date was before almost in, um, received Are we losing you? Hello. Yeah, can you repeat that? Uh, you're not uh, audible. Uh, no. Can you hear me? Yes. You may proceed. Thank you very much. As I was saying, okay, thank you very much. I hope I'm audible on the chair. We can't hear you, honorable members. Can you hear on your side? Okay. No, chair. Okay, we can't hear. Yeah. Paulo Vuyo, please uh, attend to your line. Uh, we don't seem to pick you up on this end.
check in the US. The OVP that can assist and uh, perhaps continue with the presentation. Yes, uh, our governor. Okay, thank you, Chair. Anyone from OBP? We can't hear anything. Are you able to hear us now, Chuck? Yeah, but uh, the signal is not good. Can we have one person speak and uh, present and see uh, how far we go? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Chairperson, sorry on the point of order, Chair. This this is not working. I don't know if they want to um and connect again. Really not working. Yeah, we we can't uh, hear anything, Honourable Stain. Uh, we're going to have to uh, give uh, you a uh, last uh, minute to try and sort this out. If not, uh, we will have to uh, restart the presentation and hop on to another entity while you sort uh, your uh, connections, because we can't hear anything on our end. Can you hear me under uh, uh, Mrs. Govinda? Yes, we can hear from Mrs. Govinda. The line is clear for now. Okay, Chair. Okay, we, we were under a strategic goal number three, as we speak of sales and marketing. And as I was saying, Chair, it has got four and, uh, satisfied customers, talks about the percentage number of customers complaints resolved, new partnership, talks about agreements um, that you have signed and a number of farmers trained and registered distributors. Under satisfied customers, our annual target on the chair is 80%. Our actual performance was 54.7%. Uh, so we, we um, underachieved by minus 25%. Uh, the, the reason why I was explaining chair was because we received two customer complaints in the last two weeks, in the second week of, of March. And normally the lead time to resolve customer complaints is about 21 days. So that actually falls off within the new financial year. That's why we didn't achieve that one. On the new partnership, our annual target is three. Our actual performance is three. That we did actually achieve. On the number of farmers trained where we are targeting um, uh, emerging farmers, our target was 250 uh, farmers that we were supposed to, to achieve. We overachieved by uh, more than 600 um, a number of farmers. Uh, the idea we overachieved by 396. And the reason why we managed to do it, it was because immediately after the lockdown restriction came down, we uh, worked very closely with provincial veterinary services and also the, the, the ERC, our partner, in trying to achieve this goal. So that was a challenge, yes, but we managed to, to get um, access to a lot of farmers. On the registered distributors and on the wheelchair, uh, our annual target is actually two, we overachieved by four. And the reason why we have this one, as we explained previously, it is because 
OBP strives to increase its product uh, accessibility uh, to, 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 to rural areas. So that is why this indicator is always carried over. So we overachieved by, by two um, and the small distributors that we have, we have in, 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 in our, our books. The next slide, Chair. Under strategic goal number four, which speaks about operations and production, and under this strategic goal, we've got two outcomes, improved production and improved efficiency. As you can recall, Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, so the Chair did actually indicate that they didn't hear me correctly. On the strategic goal number one, that speaks about financial sustainability. I indicated, uh, Chair, that um, we didn't do very well, especially when it comes to profitability. And I said I will explain it far much better when we come to this slide of strategic goal number four. And you will see, Chair, with, with regard to improved production, that we didn't actually um, achieve this one. This goes hand in hand with what was summarized by our honorable chairperson of the board uh, in her introduction with regard to some of the challenges that we are facing with regard to our equipment. So the profit that you saw on strategic goal number one, even though we overachieved on our revenue, but the profit actually went down. It's linked with the frequent breakdown due to the equipment challenges. So we spend more in trying to fix our, our equipment. So that is why on the profitability side, we didn't achieve. On the uh, uh, um, uh, improved efficiency, uh, Chair, let me just explain again, because it might bring some, uh, some confusion on this one that we didn't achieve on production, but we improved on efficiency. Our production uh, plan normally starts six months ahead of time. So what it means is six months before the end of the 2019 financial year, we did well, especially when it comes to production, because we're anticipating that the 2020-2021, we might experience some uh, uh, equipment challenges. So we overproduced. By the time we entered into a new financial year, what we focused on was more on um, uh, testing and transferring the product into distribution. So the target year is it goes hand in hand with our sales focus, which speaks about the quantities that we were successfully transferred into our, our display. That is why we actually overachieved. Next slide, please. Strategic goal number five speaks about human resource and management and development. This talks more about um, attraction, uh, development, retention of our, our staff through the fourth industrial revolution. Under this one, Chair, we have three outcomes uh, on policy documents, uh, performance management, and training skills. Under policy uh, documents, um, a number of policy reviews, annual target of three, we only achieved seven. So we underachieved by, by seven. Performance management, we have 5% not, not achieved. And training skills, we had 19% not, not achieved. Overall, Chair, uh, under this strategic goal, uh, as you see under the reason for, for variance and also the action plan, it was because we didn't have the uh, HR manager and the, that process of appointing the, the HR manager has just been finalized. And, and hopefully before the end of the financial year, some of the uh, outcomes that rolled over into this current financial year will be resolved. And next slide, please. I'm going to hand over to our uh, CFO just to summarize the financials of last year's performance. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Honorable Members. Uh, I will take you th through the next few slides um, with, re with uh, reference to the financial performance for OBP. Our revenue increased by 35% in terms of year-on-year uh, increase. However, in terms of budget, we have increased our revenue by 40%. We've had the largest trend of increase in demand from uh, foreign countries. This does not mean that we negate our domestic market, but we've realized that as a brand uh, OBP, we are recognized internationally, and we have taken the cognizance and strategically decided 
to then also take our product outside the borders of South Africa. And that is proving to um, allow us to grow. And uh, the impact of COVID was felt, uh, but fortunately, the strategy um, assisted OBP to then grow. We have improved from a net loss position in the prior year to a profit position. And why this is critical for OBP is because we do not receive any grant operational funding, and it is key for OBP to be able to operate independently and um, be able to meet all its um, liabilities of which we do. Um, cash generated from operating activities improved, and we actually moved from a negative position to a positive position, which was excellent for the entity. We then increased our closing cash balance to 274. We have a strong uh, balance sheet. We have no debt that is owing uh, as at the end of the year. Please move on to the next slide. This is just a snapshot of our income statement. Uh, I will not delve into it, but these are the key figures that I have summarized in the uh, initial um, presentation I've given on the summary of our financial performance. Please do move to the next slide. This is the balance sheet for OBP, uh, reiterating that uh, our debt position is nil, uh, which is critical to our operations. I have noted that we do not receive operational funding in terms of grant, but you will note there is some grant funding for our doctorate um, candidates and some of our research. Uh, all this is then utilized in the growth of OBP and also our mandate of growing the community uh, within South Africa. Please move on to the next slide. This is just a summary of our cash flow position. Um, you will note that in terms of our operate, operational expenditure, we have gone to a positive balance. We've been able to cover all our expenditure. In terms of our investing activities, we have reduced our capital expenditure and we would note the, the restraints around COVID, um, changing our daily operational movements around having uh, some staff on site, some off. So there were certain limitations around what we could complete in the financial year. And going forward, it's an area we will focus on, including some aspects of procurement um, in terms of tenders not being awarded due to non-compliance. Non so this has impacted our capital expenditure. Please move on to the next slide. Uh, I will then return the presentation to Dr. Mudumo. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. On this slide that you're looking at is the key strategic risks that are aligned with our, our corporate plan. And you'll notice that um, they are highly linked with the objectives of the first slide that I've shared with you. And you will see under the outcome that we, the, the risk speaks directly to the, our financial growth and sustainability because we, we have to be competitive and also at the same time we have to grow and become profitable. And then the, the next one is um, uh, a continuous improvement of our business processes, uh, improve customer service. Without customers, we won't be able to have a business and also looking at the um, ethical and, and development of, of leadership with regard to running of the organization. I'm not going to go into the details on the chair with regard to the key strategic risk um, uh, because the, the presentation was, was shared with the honorable members, but we do identify key risk as per the outcome and also the risk mitigation. Uh, some have they've just been, uh, been done successfully and we are continuously trying to review um, the, the strategic risk with regard to the current challenge so that we prepare for the next financial year. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now, uh, Chair, I just want to uh, indicate a certain areas before I can summarize on the areas of improvement. Uh, Chair, you are well aware that we, we did actually share with the Honorable Committee members about the challenges that we're facing in our last uh, presentation, that we um, have serious problem with our 
aging infrastructure and equipment. Um, as you are well aware that recently, in the last few months, the issue of, of electricity outages has been affecting all manufacturing companies and OBP was not also spared. So the, any disruptions with regard to energy supply to OBP, it will have a serious impact, especially when it comes to our production capability. And that unfortunately were amongst those who were affected by electricity outages. And that impacted directly on the supply of products. And, and possibly the chair, honorable chair might know that we had serious challenges with regard to the, some of the viral vaccines, a Bhutan in particular, African sickness and lumpy skin. Uh, but fortunately, um, through our internal interventions, uh, even though we lost quite a lot of batches because of that, we managed to, to uh, salvage some of the batches, such as Bhutan, uh, that we are currently distributing, a uh, lumpy skin that came out a month ago, and more batches will be coming. And African nail signature is a little bit sensitive, and we are preparing it to, for distribution in the next coming week. Now, looking at the challenges and areas where we believe that we need to, 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 uh, to, to improve for the next coming financial year. Well, obviously, um, the target is more on the small and bigger farmers and emerging farmers. So we will increase our product accessibility uh, to rural areas. And we will have to invest in our um, facility upgrade. And we will finalize the registration dossier. Without the finalization of that, we will never have product, we will never have a market. And customer service is what is an integral part of OBP's business model. And the brand of OBP is very strong, as you saw in our export market that we're doing exceedingly well. Uh, we are going to invest in a lot of new technologies and also combination vaccines, uh, which is what farmers uh, want to reduce their labor cost. And building relationship, both private and, and government, and uh, we will continue to, 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 do, to do that. Uh, our collaborations, uh, both uh, domestically and internationally, will actually do it because for us to introduce any form of technologies, we need partnership. So Chair, I think, of course, with all the areas that we are targeting for the next coming financial year, we are hopeful that we will improve on our sales revenue, uh, which is more important, and also our market share. Thank you very much, Chair. Chairperson of OB, any further input? Nothing from my side, Chair. Um, so to just uh, thank the uh, Honourable Chair and the committee members for the opportunity this morning. Thank you. Thank you, uh, honorable members. Let us uh, appreciate uh, the presentation and uh, annual report of OPP that has been put uh, to us uh, by the chairperson of uh, OPP, Mamu Rene Kinosi, as well as uh, the leadership in the OPP. I will now open the session for questions of clarity and comments. Uh, Honorable Mbata. Um, morning, Chair. No, for now, I don't have any clarity or questions. You are, you are covered. Thank you. Honorable Stain. Thank you, Chairperson, and also thank you uh, to the presenters, Chair. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't ask this question when we met with the department, but just something that I thought of now when OBP was speaking and um, the issues of COVID came up again. As far as I remember, agriculture was made a, a, a essential service. So I just want to find out from the OBP itself if they were not seemed as an essential service as a support to the agricultural sector and whether they, um, oh, I see the ministers here, maybe the minister can also assist with that, uh, whether the whole 
all the support, uh, the ARC, the OBP, and other, um, like the PPECB, the, P the industries that support the agricultural sector, were they not, uh, were they part of um, the, the support for agriculture and could they function 100% or also did they have challenges regarding that? Chair, and the issue of load shedding and the electricity supply is a massive um, problem for everyone. So I, my first question would be to the OBP, what do you have in place, especially the short notices that we would get um, from ESCOM um, to, to go onto a load shedding? It would have a massive impact on a, on a place like the OBP. What do you have in place to assist us? Because I don't think we are at the end of uh, the load shedding. So what plans do you have in place? What is the extra cost that you have to incur uh, in a monthly basis to keep uh, OBP up and functioning? So I just want to see uh, the impact of that. And then, Chairperson, I also listened uh, to the non-availability of certain vaccines. And to me, it sounds as if uh, maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, it started because um, of the electricity supplies. I would like to find out, and I'm also told that um, OBP is not publishing anymore a list of what vaccines is not available. Firstly, I want to find out if that is correct, because in the past we did get uh, publications from the OBP of the lists of vaccines that's not available. Secondly, um, those that's currently not available, um, and I have a few in front of me, um, I don't have to list them. Um, since when were they not available? Because it's my information that the, the dry freeze, let me call it machine for a, for a lack of a better word, I don't know these te technical words, is not currently functioning and and is is that the, also an impact on on which vaccines will it the dry freezer uh, on on which vaccines will that have an impact and then cheapest i did ask in the past and i'm going to ask it again and i'm glad to see the ministers here but i, I wouldn't say the the, the co-joining or the what but i am concerned about the silo mentality and working relationships still of all these entities. And I asked when we met the South African Veterinary Council the other day, what is the impact of the non-availability of the vaccines on the Veterinary Council? So I would like to find out from OEP, if you know a vaccine is not available and for a long time, what is your um, working relationship or your communication or in Afrikaans is the word skakel and your your, 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 I don't know what is the English word, but I think we get the, the, the message with the Veterinary Council because it, it's got a massive impact, the fact that vaccines for a certain time is not available. So, um, and then I'm also concerned about the message about the why product development did not happen. And I think it's when I started thinking about this thing of, um, uh, COVID. We can't say COVID, you know, we had COVID and some of the reasons for that is COVID related. So that's why I asked the question about um, the support and, and whether the, uh, this entity um, could work 100% or that you also, I would almost say, go and lock down during the COVID time. Thank you, Chairperson. It's a long story. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, we have time for long stories today, uh, Honorable Stay. Uh, Honorable uh, Memarlo. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Um, let, uh, let me send my greetings and I'll resume Papa Raleen. Uh, uh, I would like to apologize for my video because it's affecting my connectivity if it's on. Now, my, 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 my take will be to greet the minister and all the ministers that are there, if they are there, and all members of the portfolio committee and the joint committee the members that are there. Chairperson, <clears throat> I will also uh, acknowledge the presentation made by OVP entity. 
uh, I've realized that uh, on their on the summary that was presented to us, uh, it was like uh, they said to us that they got an unqualified audit opinion with material emphasis, uh, uh, which talks about deferring of tax, non-compliance, and regular expenditure in that line. I just wanted to check on that. What will they tell us that they, that what is the plan in place to fix those emphasis that uh, the Auditor General has uh, pointed out as an opinion? And also, Chairperson, I wanted to also to check on the issue of uh, a, a, a strategic a risk, man, on the st strategic risk management, the issue of corruption. They tell us what, what, what is the plan that is in place to make sure that the, some of those risks that they were talking about have been looked at and what is it that they are going to do. The other issue, tap, tap person, which is also is, is on management structure. On the management structure, they're talking about the, the different of one, one or two percents, which uh, they must tell us the one or two percent, how are they going to address it? The last thing, but two to my, 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 my list is that um, uh, production, uh, production development on a new improvement knowledge under performance by 2%. How are they going to address that 2%? Uh, uh, I just wanted to understand that, the last point one. One of the issues that uh, they talked about is the issue of lockdown, of which I'm not going to also support that, uh, that the OVB can tell us about the lockdown. I was made to believe that during the lockdown, each and every organization, they had some regulations to follow to implement some of their activities following some of those regulations. There is no government that can operate without regulations to mitigate of the things that were supposed to be done. They cannot tell us that they have underperformed because of the, 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 the COVID-19, uh, which was uh, one of the things that was there, but there were regulations. They must tell us what was the problem and how are they going to address those problems that are behind because of those uh, uh, COVID-19 issues. Chairperson. Th Thank you, the Honorable uh, Memasho. Pankomo. The Honorable Mamo Babama. Uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Matthias. Dr. Matthias. The Honorable Bautapa. Bautapa. Akbar Repriet. Morning, Chair. Who handed? Good in cell, Forsitter. I guess by a good man. I guess blame that the word. Chair, maybe from my side, um, I think I'm mostly covered. I have one question, however. Um, I know it is an improvement of 7%, seven, seven percent, the fact that OBP have reached 50% of their targets. But, um, and I think we can all agree, 50% is not near enough. Um, and we can also see in terms of, of the plan forward that they have. Um, I think they, they've got clear goals and you can see a plan, plan forward. But I would like to find out from them in terms of uh, the audit action plan, in, in terms of, I think it's slide 13 or something where they've got clear cut goals on how they are going to improve. If they can maybe provide us feedback in terms of um, quarter one that has just passed, um, how have they actually fared? How have they implemented? And what is the... Um, and my English words are also finished 
<laughs> like honorable stains today. I think it's because it's maybe a Friday. What is the vooruitskatting? Looking forward to this year, um, will they be able to actually achieve more of their targets and to actually have service delivery on the ground too? Um, that is only the only input from me. Thanks. Thank you for the Honorable Tabe Kuru. Thank you, Mr. Kuru. Mbonga, greetings to uh, the honorable members of the committee, the department officials, uh, uh, as well uh, oh, the presenters of, from, from OVP, as well as the, the, the ministry. Uh, I don't think I have a question, Chairperson, except to say, Having heard the presenter mention the issue of the infrastructure in the, the OPP, my, then my question comes, whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility it is to see to it that uh, the infrastructure is, is being uh, sort of uh, developed for the purposes of uh, OPP to produce as much as they, they could the vaccines to assist uh, uh, or, or to, to, to distribute, as well as uh, 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 assist, more especially the, the poorest of the poor, the livestock owners in rural areas where they might have uh, maybe a, a cheaper vaccines if, if it's still uh, regarded as part of the, 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 the department uh, entity to supply uh, for the purposes of, of, of assisting the, 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 the rural people, the rural livestock owners. It's not a question except that uh, I was just uh, concerned when I have, when I heard that uh, the infrastructure is still a challenge. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Dabizit. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member on the platform? who would like uh, to uh, pose a question and I've not been able to recognize. Any other honorable members on the platform who may wish to pose a question? If not honorable members, let me sponsor one or two of the questions. Uh, towards uh, the presentation made by the OBP. Um, and uh, perhaps uh, honorable members, we should uh, ask uh, the OBP to provide a report on the outcomes of the investigation into the fruitless and wasteful expenditure, which has amounted to 7.4 million rands that was incurred in the previous financial year which was mostly for the inventory ordered and paid for, but not received. This is a grave transgression, honorable members, that we may have uh, people uh, pay for uh, stuff and yet it is not received. And we would like uh, the officials uh, in the OPP to be held accountable for this. A similar transgression as well, uh, which amounted to 5 million rents, was also incurred in the reporting year of the OBP. And it should further provide details and actions to be taken on this. We cannot, honorable members, leave such things to be a norm, whilst the vast majority of our people in our country uh, are exposed to extreme measures of poverty. And we'd like the OPB take this uh, with the seriousness, uh, take immediate uh, action against this. Secondly, honorable members, can the OPP uh, report, uh, actually the OPP reported that it managed to increase its footprint through the appointment of small distributors, focusing on making OBP's products accessible to small emerging farmers. Can the OBP indicate if its footprint has been expanded 
to all provinces, particularly in rural provinces. Thank you. Let us now hand back to the chairperson of the OPP, Mamo Rene Kinosi, and the officials in the OPP. Thank you, Honourable Chairs and uh, Chair, and thank you to the members for, for the questions. Um, Chair, I'd, I'd just like to, to talk on one or two of the questions, and I'll hand over to management to provide the actual detail to some of the questions. Um, but I think just to, to indicate that um, in terms of the audit outcome and the um, action plans going forward, um, and, and yes, it's true that 50% uh, is by no stretch of the imagination a good result to have achieved. Um, however, the um, various uh, uh, corrective actions have been put in place. One is that that our vacancies at the, at the uh, strategic level has now been filled. Uh, two is that in terms of the OBP, um, OBP had archaic policies and procedures in the organization, which has also contributed to some of the challenges in the organization. Those have been prioritized and management is working um, timelessly and in ensuring that uh, tirelessly in ensuring that the policies and procedures are, are updated so we can tighten the control environment um, from a fruitless and wasteful expenditure and even irregular expenditure. We've tightened the controls, especially around the SEM environment. Those controls have been tightened and uh, we in talks with National Treasury to also assist us in terms of the larger procurement uh, for infrastructure. Um, we've put together um, a infrastructure plans to repair and maintain uh, current infrastructure to augment and also to replace but um, those have also <clears throat> obviously been prioritized in terms of the short medium and long term um, uh, procedures of the organization and the strategic plans of the organization chair. Um, with regards to your request for the reports, uh, we will ensure that those reports are submitted to the Portfolio Committee Chair. Um, if I can just hand over then to Dr. Modumo and uh, Mrs. Governor to just report, to, to respond to the other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mekinosi. But uh, before uh, Dr. Modumo comes in, uh, let me also just sponsor another question which I uh, missed out on. Uh, which actually last year, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development reported to the committee that it was assisting the OBP to be a preferred supplier of vaccines to provinces as part of uh, COVID-19 disaster intervention. Can we have the OBP provide an update on the matter and indicate if such assistance through a signed contract has been received from the department? If you may also cover that, Dr. Uh, Mduma, you may proceed. And then Mamu uh, uh, Thank you, Honorable Chair. I will start first with the, um, uh, some of the questions and comments by Honorable Steen. Some of the questions are actually interlinked, uh, but I'll try to, to explain some of the key things uh, that might have brought some misunderstanding. One of them is the whether OBP was classified um, under essential service. And the question is yes, Chair. Um, during the COVID-19, OBP was an essential service and we were operational. However, um, we had limited number of people who were coming to OBP, so we're coming on, on, on rotation. Like I explained, that we were fortunate enough because on our plans of the 2019, we overproduced, which simply means in the uh, 2020 financial year, uh, our key production was mostly on testing to make sure that the product that we produced in 2019 complied, and most of the product that we, we tested complied. That is why our uh, uh, production efficiency, <laughs> we, we overachieved by 1.8. 1. 
So, so we, it, 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 essential service chair uh, together with the, I think the ERC, all the agricultural it, 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 entities. And the, another question was on electricity by honorable steam was uh, on electricity and that what has been the impact, whether the, the uh, electricity had an impact on uh, uh, production supply. But remember, honorable chair, we're talking about the 2020 uh, performance. So on the 2020 base, exactly on what I've said that we overproduced in 2019. So the impact of electricity, especially when it comes to uh, testing and transfer, where production efficiency is linked with sales focus as I explained. So in the success of testing and then uh, uh, distribute and, and transferring to the relevant department, which is dispatch and making sure that it reaches the, the farmers on time. So that one we actually uh, um, we've done that with with, with a good success. the The question from Ondo State was, what do we have? Um, if ever electricity goes down, do we have anything in place? Yes, Ondo Chair, we do have a code. We do have generators in place, and and every time when electricity goes down, we we, we normally have generators that kicks in. But honorable chair, you will be sympathize with OBP that the, the cost implication of running electricity during, I mean, running a generator during the time when electricity actually is down. And we don't actually pass that high level of cost to, to the client. Uh, OBP normally absorbs it. On the product availability, again, there was issues of, of, of equipment and also uh, electricity. I think I, I've just explained that the electricity on the 2020 was had minimal impact. And again, uh, the lockdown had minimal impact was, was already produced in the 2019 uh, financial year. The, the black vaccine share during the period of um, a, a lockdown a year ago, uh, we didn't have such a lot of uh, product availability uh, in the previous year with regard to black vaccines. Uh, it, it is possible that the honorable chair is referring to the current uh, challenges that we're facing with regard to the supply. But in the 2020-2021 financial year, on the blood vaccines, I think we had almost all the blood, blood vaccines available and we were distributing them on, on time. Yes, there might have been one or two dishes but I think we managed to, to supply them. But I think because the blood vaccine question actually came with regard to the current and the state was more particular, wanted to know what has been the impact of it. Yes, honorable, we, we had a very serious problem, and especially during the, the lockdown situation on uh, the uh, efficiency with regard to the supply of uh, nitrogen because we get uh, nitrogen from our supplier. And uh, during that period, um, the supply of, of nit nitrogen was, was, was quite a challenge. And there were times whereby we got uh, depleted with regard to nitrogen and that compromised some of our, our blood vaccines. And I can just mention that uh, hard water was one of them. Uh, gold sickness was also one of them. Uh, we had discussions with the ERC uh, because we normally uh, procure them from the ERC uh, in bulk. And we lost uh, some fuel and we had to procure others. We managed to retest some of the blood vaccines that we nearly lost are currently under, under test. And we will be getting the results very soon. We have communicated such a challenge to all our stakeholders and also the, the farmers with regard to the blood vaccines. But um, on the red water, Africa Red Water and Asiatic Red Water, we were able to, to, to supply. It's only the hard water and also the uh, anaplasma where we had some challenges. The Honorable Mrs. Stein also wanted to know what which product were affected by the freeze dryer. And I can confirm that the freeze dryer didn't give us such a big problem a year ago. So on our current performance, uh, we had um, limited disruption with regard, regarding the, the freeze dryer. But on the current financial year, yes, we had serious uh, production challenges. So it's, it's possible that the honorable 
Mrs. Stein might have got some information from uh, aggrieved farmers with regard to some of the products that I did actually mention. Uh, such product that come from the tree dry is African Oscillus, uh, which is still a challenge. The blue town, um, it, it was a challenge, but we're currently uh, distributing it is available now at some of the co-op stations and more batches of blue town will be coming later this month. We have the lamp skin, we managed to, in fact, lamp skin, we didn't have a problem. Um, honestly, Chair, we managed to produce a batch around uh, July and August. That is why we were able to supply both the domestic and even exports. Um, as I said, the African non-signature is quite a challenge for now. We'll be supplying. Brucella will be supplying. Um, it, it has been available since this week, so we're currently distributing quite a lot. There was also a comment uh, by the Honorable Ms. Stain with regard to the uh, perceived silo mentality. I can confirm to you, uh, Honorable Stain, that OBP uh, has been in partnership with quite a lot of stakeholders, uh, ARC in particular, CSIR, TIA, SAVEC. So in, in, in most of our collaboration, we discuss about uh, different challenges. And with SAVEC, we normally have, uh, we meet SAVEC at South Africa Council once or twice a year. We met them a year ago to discuss certain issues of common interest. Uh, that was with regard to uh, a product in, in, in the market. So that engagement with, with, stake, with stakeholders such as SAVA, uh, SAVEC, and NHPG, um, we do communicate with them because they are um, a key stakeholder in part and parcel of our strategy with regard to servicing some of our, our clients. Um, there was also a question on the qualified audit with regard to non-compliance and tax, uh, as identified by the AG. I will hand over to the CFO just to say a few words with regard to that, and also the strategic risk, especially on, on corruption. Thank you, Chair. Did that, that, that speak to um, irregular expenditure, audit plan, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and uh, what is the action plan we put in place for these specific areas. Um, in terms of uh, irregular expenditure, we have put in a place, we've uh, worked closely with our board where we have uh, quite good expertise around that area. And as of today, in the current financial year, we have reduced our irregular expenditure. We only have one instance of a minimal amount of 24,000 as a to date. Um, so the uh, audit plan, uh, implementation of the plan has worked and is bearing fruit. In terms of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, the one uh, investigation revealed the two amounts that have been disclosed of 7 million and 4 million, although it was uh, revealed with one investigation. So the entire investigation uh, revealed the uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure of uh, 13 million. We have taken internal disciplinary actions. Uh, some have led to dismissal, some are still in progress. It has also been extended to the uh, SAPS and they are concluding investigations and these investigations include the companies uh, that were involved in the collusion. And as of to date, uh, SAPS has given us uh, feedback that uh, they are in progress of getting um, uh, bank statements and outside and other stakeholders 